Welcome to the Judge John Hodgman Podcast. I'm bailiff Jesse Thorne. This week, it's just is not cricket. Nate brings the case against his friend Atif. Nate and Atif are both obsessed with the sport of cricket, but they disagree over a controversial cricket maneuver called man codding the batter. Nate says it's perfectly acceptable. Atif says it may technically be allowed, but all the same, it's just not cricket. Who's right, who's wrong, only one can decide. Please rise as Judge John Hodgman enters the courtroom and presents an obscure cultural reference. Personally, I'm always delighted to see my grandfather being remembered. I'd love to see the Hodgman or Hodgmaning stay and keep alive his memories and legacy as a great podcaster, deeply respected and admired by everyone I've met and those who knew him and experienced life with him. Bailiff Jesse Thorne, please swear them in. Atif and Nate, please rise and raise your right hands. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you, God or whatever? I do. Yes, I do. Do you swear to abide by Judge John Hodgman's ruling, despite the fact that his favorite sport is gin? I do. Indeed. Judge Hodgman, you may proceed. Nate, not if you may be seated for an immediate summary judgment in one of yours favors. Can either of you name the piece of culture that I referenced? As I entered this fake courtroom, Atif, let's start with you. Grandfather clocks? Grandfather clocks. I'm going to write it down. <laughs> I'm just going to say that this quote has something to do with the case at hand. So I'll just put in grandfather clocks, but I'm going to give you a chance to revise that. Because I'm a sporting gentleman. Something to do Nate, with the case at hand. Yeah, Nate, do you have a guess? That's a tough one. It has something to do with this case. Um... <laughs> I'd love to see the Hodgman or Hodgmaning stay. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. When I'm saying Hodgman and Hodgmaning, that's not in the original quote. I'm covering up. This is not a quote about a podcaster. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Named Hodgman. Yeah. I'm going to say uh, King Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> Always a good guess. <laughs> I wrote that on like, Half of the fill in the blanks on the SATs. Yeah, absolutely. As a as a cricketophile, an Anglo, an American Anglophile as you are, Nate, I'll write that down. That's appropriate, <laughs> but it's definitely wrong. Atif, did you want to take another guess, or do you feel like you would just want to go ahead with this thing? W. G. Grace. Wow, you stumped me. That's an obscure cultural reference for me. Who's W. E. G. Whatever. W. G. Grace is like a a, a legendary English cricketer. Um, from the early 20th century, I think. Yeah. A legendary English cricketer from the 20th century, the ancient history. <laughs> Indeed. You're on the right... What, what's a good cricketing term for tr track? You're in your crease. Is that a thing? It Kind of, yeah. Okay, good enough. That's what I'm going to say. But you're wrong. All guesses are wrong. Why, why would I be talking about W.G. Grace? <laughs> when the whole topic of this thing and the Wikipedia article I had to read for homework is about the famous Indian cricketer, Vinu Mankad, right? That's what this is all about. The quote was from Bash Mankad, who uh, was referring to his grandfather, the famous Indian cricketer, Vinu Mankad. He gave the quote to the Indian Express in January of 2023 in response to the suggestion by the Australian Cricketers Association to dissociate the name Mankading from the move in question here. The move in question, I understand, refers to running out the batter on the non-striking end, which Vinu Manka did in 1947 to the great alarm and disgust of many Australians with whom India was playing that game of pr cricket at the time. I believe, I don't know what any of those words mean. I think we're going to find out. But in this case, I did change the name to Hodgman and Hodgmaning for, the, uh, for the, my signature move which is also frowned upon when guesting on other podcasts, which is plugging my stuff too early in the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> like not waiting till the end and saying things like Vacation Land is now available in paperback. Please check out Dicktown on Hulu, Hodgman.substack.com, whatever it might be. I usually put it in awkwardly at the beginning. That's called Hodgmaning now. But we're here to talk about man cutting, and we're here to talk to Nate and Atif. Who seeks justice in this court? I do. That would be Nate. Nate, Nate Hayes. I write for EmergingCricket.com about cricket, about American cricket in particular. And uh, yes, I seek justice. And what part of England is that accent from? <laughs> this is, I'm actually from the Washington, D.C. area, and I currently live in North Carolina. You are an American cricket enthusiast. That's correct. 
why shouldn't I throw you out of this court right now, weirdo? You probably yeah, that's should. That's very weird. <laughs> that's very specific. Adorably so, I dare say, Nate. You love cricket. We'll get to why you love cricket so much in a minute. But your dispute is with your friend Atif. Uh, and what is your dispute? Well, basically, uh, there's this this mode of dismissal that is perfectly within the rules. Cricket is... Whoa, 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 whoa. English, please, <laughs> so to speak. Well... <laughs> But mode of dismissal. If you, I know what you're talking about. Right. But people listening to this podcast would be like, oh, mode of dismissal. That's like Hodgman shutting down that weird North Carolinian cricket guy just then. You're talking about something in cricket. Yes. Let me emerge from my nerdy hole here for a second. If you would, sir. Let me compare it a little bit to baseball. Basically, what's happening is the equivalent of a runner getting picked off of first base. The non-striker, right. there are two, basically two bases, which are kind of both home plate, and you have to be safe at both of those to score, or you, you have two batters batting in the middle. And um, what happens is the ba batter who's batting from the end the bowler is bowling from, or the batter who is running from the end that the bowler is bowling from, the bowler being the pitcher, leaves a little bit too early. He, he gets a head start, and the bowler, who's about to deliver the ball, gets him out by hitting the stumps behind the batter, behind the non-striker, and um, it's it is confusing. I, I I will admit. Oh no no! I followed every. I absolutely followed every word of what you just said. Great great. But yeah. basically, basically, I understood it from the first part, and then the rest of it was all superfluous to me because I already understood what was happening. Well, that <laughs> it's good that I led with that then. But essentially, it's considered unsporting by a lot of people in traditional cricketing nations, uh, particularly England and Australia, and by many others as the game becomes shorter as the shorter format of the game becomes more popular the, the goal of the game is to score as many runs as you can per ball and so therefore people will leave a little bit early to try to get closer to the other end a little bit quicker and i think it's perfectly fair that a bowler picks off that guy when he tries to do that all right i think i understand i think i understand i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna clarify this by talking to atif for a second <clears throat> atif you are friends with nate I am indeed. Very, I'm always looking for people who are spreading the gospel of cricket around the world, as Nate does so well in in North America. So that's uh, yeah, that was it was an instant friendship. And you are you are not in North Carolina, the the cricket epicenter of the world. You are actually in another country, correct? I am. I'm in the north of London. Um, well, I live in the north of London in uh, in uh, in England, and yeah, very much the 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 sort of the beginning place, the birthplace of this sport that sort of captivated the hearts of billions of people around the world and you and you are a you are a, cr a cricket commentator that's right i work on a program called uh, test match special which is the oldest um cricket broadcasting service uh in the world uh it's been around for almost a hundred hundred years almost uh and uh yeah i've been a part of that for the last six years it's a it's a dream job you get to travel you know the world essentially and sit in the best seat in the house, watch a game of cricket, sit next to a legend, and get paid for the privilege. It's awesome. And uh, and watching a game of cricket takes four or nine days? Uh, it can take <laughs> up to five days, uh, depending wow. on the format of the game, but it can also be as little as, uh, you know, a couple of hours, depending on the format you're watching. That's all. That's all I know about cricket. Pretty much is that it's a it's a it's a it's a lazy game. It takes a long time. Whoa! And Whoa. Uh, you get you get you get chilly because you play it with sweaters. I guess. Well, you're out there for a long time. If you're there for five days, you're going to see a variety of climates. <laughs> I, lo I, lo I love a leisurely pace. Don't get me wrong. I'm I'm complimenting cricket. I'm not criticizing. I love about cricket that they took one of baseball's best qualities, which is that it's boring. And then <laughs> expanded it by tenfold. <laughs> I have a feeling that cricket came before baseball, though, Jesse. I hate to break it to you. I believe they developed in parallel. All right. Fair enough. I'm not the cricket expert. These two are. So, Atif, I'm going to ask you. So, this is what I understand about this maneuver that, uh, that uh, uh, Nate was trying to explain. Uh, I'm the bowler. I'm, I'm going to throw the, I'm going to throw, pitch the ball, bowl the bowl, whatever it is, at the batter on the other end. Right? Yes. And there's also a batter, like, off to my right. Yes. Waiting to run as soon as I pitch it. And if he or she or they get too far from where they're supposed to be, I could, theoretically, this is the point of contention, instead of bowling the ball, just throw it at the wicket behind me and get that batter out, correct? Theoretically, yes. Right, that's what happens. I mean, it did happen in 1947. Yes. Among other times. 
Vino Manca did this. He did. And it was very controversial to the point that the, the, the maneuver itself is known in cricket as mancading or mancading or however it's pronounced around the world as a, as a term, not as the guy. Now, it's problematic to a degree because uh, it, it is considered to be a unfair move. I wouldn't say unfair, but it's certainly not within what is referred to and has become quite a negative catchphrase in cricket, the spirit of the game. Now, when we say spirit of the game, it sounds like a very sort of poncy old school, like really, you know, it takes cricket back to that sort of exclusionary stage where it was just for sort of right. rich old white guys who could play cricket and everybody else was just there to watch. And obviously that's not what cricket is anymore. It's a game that's played all over the world by and played very, very well, much better than England sometimes in other parts of the world. Uh, the crux of my argument today isn't going to be that this rule is illegal, uh, this move is illegal, because by the letter of the laws of the game, it is legal. Uh, my my The crux of my sort of argument is that it doesn't serve the game. Uh, it doesn't mm. add to the value of cricket. Now, I understand mm. the sort of the base reason behind why it exists. It's not the same in my mind as stealing a base in baseball. It's a, it's a very different thing. Cricket is a game that's not just played at an elite level by elite, highly paid multimillionaires around the world as it is, but it's also played at a very casual level by hundreds of thousands of millions of people, in fact, uh, every weekend. In England, we have you know uh, more than 40,000 cricket clubs in action every weekend, Saturday and Sunday, playing in their local parks. Uh, if this rule became more uh, widespread and more mainstream, because despite the fact that it's happened and there's been so much discussion about it, it's only actually happened a handful of times in the history of cricket, which is not a lot considering there's been thousands and thousands and thousands of cricket matches, right? If this becomes more mainstream, I think it could become very problematic. I feel like the rule in its current form, um, it just it just tilts the balance too far away from what makes a sporting contest. So just to boil it down, you are... Moncotting skeptical, if not anti. And Nate, you're like, it's cool, do it whenever. Yes? Yes and no. Yes. Uh, there's some hey, yes is the say, answer. Let's say yes, yes is the answer. Yes. At this stage of the conversation, <laughs> that is the answer. You are the one who uh, ostensibly is in favor of this maneuver. Yes. And not if you are you are against it. And my ruling today is going to change the world of cricket forever. I think you're the only person in the world who hasn't weighed in yet. So I, I feel like it's important that you do. <laughs> And how did this come up in, in between the two of you? When was the first time you had a fight about it? We, we've, we've discussed it re very politely with each other. He actually had a post, he had a, just a tweet that went viral, and he got a lot of support from um, a lot of people that you wouldn't really necessarily want to be su have support from, which was kind of funny. Uh, but at the same time... What was, what was the nature of the tweet, Atif? Well, so essentially the, the, there was an instance in the under-19s Women's World Cup, where um, a Pakistani player used this maneuver against a player from the Rwandan, Rwandan team, a Rwandan team that was playing for the very first time on this platform. The Pakistan team were very much in control of this match. It didn't feel like a necessary maneuver. It's again within the within their rights to do so, but they did it, and it just didn't, you know, it didn't sit very well with me. So I wrote something along the lines of, "I didn't enjoy that bit of cricket," and um, I think. In, in within cricketing terms, it's almost become like is a colonial. Is that what you wrote? Is that what you wrote? I didn't enjoy that bit of cricket. <laughs> something, something along those lines, you know. Which it, it's explosive. Not, yeah, it, well, I mean, it can be in cricketing. It was in that instance because I mean, that's very strong wording for cricket, I believe. Well, the thing is, like people, it's become this sort of colonial battleground almost, right? So where sort of Indians and Pakistanis and you know um, people from the ex Commonwealth would look at you know somebody from England uh, as someone with coming from privilege and having the right to say something like this and looking down on somebody from trying to, you know, export the right. And it becomes this whole argument about colonialism, where for me, it was just simply, I'm just thinking about the kids who play on a Saturday, right? So I just didn't like the idea of something like this that will be contentious creeping into that game at large. So I said that, and then again, it was turned into a whole, what does this English guy know? You know, he's, um, I mean, it, it turned into all people were calling me a race traitor. People were calling me uh, all sorts of things simply for having a, a small opinion on this thing. Because because you you have some Pakistani ancestry of you, uh, yourself. I have, yeah, complete Pakistani ancestry. Both my parents were born in, in Lahore in Pakistan, and I adore Pakistan, big part of my identity. Uh, but I do consider myself, you know, British, and, and, I, and I really, you know, English cricket is sort of where I've, you know, where I work, right? I work around the English cricket team, the men's and women's teams. Right. So, Nate, Atif made this comment about the unsporting nature of the Pakistani team uh, with regard to the Rwandan team. 
I was getting attacked on all sides. And you were like, you know, and obviously this is involving class. This is involving race, na nationality, world sport. And you're like, well, I'm in North Carolina. It's time for me to weigh in. <laughs> on, honestly, honestly, I led when I when, when I messaged him about it, I led with some sympathy because he had been tweeted into yeah, into everybody's eyes by Piers Morgan, who agreed with him very, very, um, oh boy. very, oh boy. very enthusiastically. And I thought that was knowing Atif, I thought that was hilarious. So, of course, I reached out to him and was like, hey, I kind of feel for you right now. Um, and then we had a discussion about it um, ourselves. But uh, but yeah, I, I wanted to as a North Carolinian, I feel like it's my birthright to to weigh in on things. America will be heard for once. We will be heard. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Finally. On cricket. And you, and how did you guys originally meet, Artif? Oh, yeah, we met on uh, what we used to be called a Twitter space. I think it's called an X space now, but we were uh, chatting about cricket uh, into the late hours of the English night. I think it must have been sort of late evening in, in North Carolina as well. And so we were just chatting and and then we were, um, uh, I got invited to play in this competition, to play in a competition, uh, remarkably enough, in, in New York. And and that's where Nate and I met for the first time. And like it was like meeting a long lost old friend and it was great immediately. Never knowing that you would soon become bitter enemies <laughs> on the opposite side of the critics cricket's great divide that would finally be settled on an American podcast. Uh, I think, Jesse Thorne, that I need to uh, I need some expertise that I do not have. Uh, do we have per, per chance an expert witness who can clarify some questions that I have at this juncture? We do indeed. One of our favorite pals. Uh, host of the long-running podcast, The Bugle, and professional cricket commentator, Andy Zaltzman. Andy, welcome to the Judge John Hodgman podcast. Thank you for having me. Hello, everyone. Andy, you have been, thank you so much for being here. It's great to have you on the podcast. And and I just need, as a longtime listener to The Bugle, I just am so excited that you're here. And if you if you judge John Hodgman listeners are not listening to the bugle, you should be listening to it uh, right immediately. Now. I'm Hodgmaning. I'm getting the plugs in <laughs> early, Andy, because you know. Um, so you've been listening along. Let me ask you a question, a simple question. First of all, what is cricket? Well, that's a uh, sounds like a simple question, but in fact, it's a very complicated question because what it is is asking what is a human being? Because cricket is <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Cricket is, without any question, the greatest thing ever invented by human beings. Okay, so so you need to start from that as your basic basic fact. It's 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 a yeah. It's a sport that explores every layer of the human condition: achievement, mm. failure, teamwork, individuality, hope, despair. Often within the space of about three minutes in your five day five day game, it's it's a game. It's sheer length. We talked about you know the five day format. Yeah, Test cricket gives you five days off from absolutely everything else you're doing from from your family, from news, from tax demands, legal summons, medical appointments. No other sport gives you that. Baseball might give you <laughs> three hours, one hundred and sixty two times in a regular season, but not five days in a row. So fundamentally, it's a journey into what it means to be alive on this planet in in wow. the last, I don't know, what's well since cricket was in I think cricket was invented basically when the the dinosaurs tried to block the asteroid and uh, it wasn't too successful, but that, that's pretty much the origin of it, I think. <laughs> they were protecting the wicket of the planet yep, Earth. Absolutely. Yeah. So the wicket is three sticks with two little sticks on top of it. Yes. Uh there are two of them. Yep. They're on either ends of a cricket grounds or something. Well, yeah, so they're, they're 22 yards apart. Um, right. But obviously, um, I think that was originally a farming... It's uh, it's a, a, a length called a chain, which is a, obviously a tenth of a furlong, which is even more obviously an eighth yeah, of a mile. Yeah. Oh, we all know that. We all know obviously, you don't need to be a rocket yeah, scientist right. to know that. In fact, if yeah, you're a rocket scientist that, and you're using chains and furlongs, you probably should resign instantly before something terrible happens. <laughs> Um, so the two the two sets of stumps are yeah twenty two yards uh, yards we still use yards in cricket because why not and um, uh, yeah so that's uh, yeah that's uh, that's the basics and on one end there's a batter or a bat uh, a bats person and on the other end there's a bowler and the bowler and there's similarities to baseball in the sense that someone is throwing a ball at someone else and they're trying to deflect the ball and if the ball knocks over the stumps or the wicket or whatever. Then that's good for the bowlers team. Yes, that's but that's bro that's broadly it. So that's uh, I guess the the big difference with baseball where there's there's no uh, wickets to aim at. 
but the the man cutting we're talking about is the wickets at the bowler's end, um, the non-striking end, because the batter is not batting but striking. Well, there's two batters, one of which is batting and one of which is non-striking batting. Um, Why not say non-batting? Um, well, because they are batting. Because batting, you know, is although it might seem like batting is just face, you know, having a ball bowled at you and then trying to hit it. Uh, actually, batting is more of a state of mind than that. So once you're out, okay. once you're out <laughs> on the pitch, you are you are batting, even if no one's actually bowling. Even if you're you. not striking, John. A lot of people would presume that batting would involve a bat. Uh, but that's true roughly half the time. <laughs> well, you still <laughs> hold your bat. You don't like just throw it off the pitch. You've still got it, and you're you're communing with it. You're you're feeling the sensory nature of its wood going through your pores into your very soul. Much like my big gavel back here, <laughs> which I'm going to hold. Now, if this were a cricket bat, and I were and I were batting, and I was in the striking position, what's the thing called? The ball? Bowl? It's a bowl. Yep. Right. And that gets bold to me, and I and I hit it. Then I start a running. Well, you don't have to run. It's not like not like in baseball. You can choose to run in cricket. Also, you can hit uh, in a three three hundred and sixty degree arc. You can hit the ball anywhere. Whereas in baseball, you have to get it in the um in the uh, what within the fair territory. Yeah, fair territory. So ninety degrees. So there's so there's a great wider range of ways to hit the ball. In uh, in cricket, and there are in baseball. You can try and hit it hard. You can try and hit it delicately. You can just defend it if you uh, if you don't think you can score runs from it. So the idea is to hit the ball into a gap and then run to the other end. That's one. Can I just say something right now? If I were ever to be re recruited yep. to a test of yep. cricket, yep. I would never choose to run. Okay, <laughs> in life, I never choose. Well, there's some some quite prominent players have taken a pretty similar uh, approach. Um, to that, Andy, you and Atif know each other. We do. We we, we work together on the same uh, the same BBC commentary team. I do the statistics. So what what is, what is your what is your take on? Well, well let me ask you this question. Yep. Very technical with regard to cricket. What is law thirty eight? Law law thirty eight. Okay, so being run out as uh, as you you compared it with uh, being thrown out in uh, uh, in baseball. Baseball. Um, yeah. Uh, so if you're running between the, uh, the, uh, the the two sets of stumps, there's a line in front of them. And to complete a run, you have to to, to, to cross the line, put something down on the ground, whether it's your bat or your, uh, your your foot or any other part of your body. If you if you fancy it, you can dive in arse first if you want or, or, or just r roll your snout along the ground, whatever whatever suits you. I'd probably call a cab. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's uh, that's, um, that's the, uh, the rule that's uh, related to the man cad. Is is running out? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think the reason people get frustrated with mancads is the contest in cricket is between the bowler and the batter, and the bowler bowls the ball. The batter has to do something with it. The mancad, the ball has not yet come into play, which is why it is uh, unsatisfying. So the bat, uh, the batter at the non-striker's end is is trying to shorten the amount they have to run by doing a process called backing up, where they leave their ground. Um, as the bowler bowls, but if they leave it too early, they're out of their ground and can be run out by this uh, means known as the mancad. And is this mode of dismissal covered under Rule 38? Is it legal in the game? Uh, it's very legal. Um, yeah. uh, I don't think anyone is disputing that it's legal. There's some argument over convention. Now, if you follow British politics at all, uh, Judge. Yeah, well, I, I listen to the bugle. <laughs> well, you'll know that uh, a, a lot of a lot of things we do in this country, we don't like to write down. We have an unwritten constitution. We mm -hmm. have parliamentary conventions that no no one has ever has ever written down. We find that the easiest that way. That way, there's no we, proof. There's no proof exactly. you ever had a constitution. But we can yeah, just right. basically make it up as we go yeah. along. And there's a convention in cricket that you warn the batter uh, at least once before uh, you then run them out through uh, through the mancad. However, there's no stipulation in the law. You you have to do that. It's a, it's a legitimate form of dismissal. But I think the reason people don't like it is because it's not really what the game is about. That contest between the bowler bowling the ball and then the batter hitting it and the fielding side trying to catch it or or then run the player out. So that's why it's a frustrating form of dismissal. I think. And do you share that frustration? What do you feel about it? I do share that frustration, and ideally, it's the kind of thing that shouldn't happen. Um, because mm. the you know the the, the non-striking batter shouldn't leave their crease, whether they change the law so that you can't leave your crease. To clarify to the listeners who may be as confused as I am, yeah, no, that's that, that's what cricket's all about. Leaving the crease is a, a little bit like leading a leading 
a base. Like you're leaving yes. your safe spot. You're yeah, not yeah. where you're supposed to be. You're getting ready. You're getting ready to run. You're anticipating what's going to happen. Yeah. And if you get into some into a zone, then if this were a sporting world, if this were Atif's world, the bowler might say, "Hey, dude," or you know, "Get back over there." I'm warning yeah. you now. Yes. But um, if you don't, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back and hit this wicket over yeah. here and run you out. Okay. So Got fundamentally, it. I think maybe a tweak of the laws to just say the non-striking batter cannot leave their ground. Until the ball is released, did you see? Did you see the match that Atif referred to when he got, frankly, eaten alive on social media? I didn't see that one uh, actually, but it's something that crops up in cricket. I think with increasing regularity, as you said, because of the the, the well, because Nate forms wants of the game. it to happen all the time. <laughs> Nate is like, let's let's do this uh, Tar Heel State style. Andy, different sports have different relationships with rule changes. Uh, yes, I think. NBA basketball and NFL football are much more likely to change their rules than Major League Baseball. Why hasn't that happened? Well, that's a good question. Many sports are uh, reluctant uh, uh, to change. You know, these laws have existed for, well, in cricket's case, in various forms for hundreds Stra of strange, uh, strange to imagine a British institution being hidebound and reluctant. <laughs> I'd bound by either the laws we have bothered to write down or the ones that we haven't. We love being no. hide bound. It's some kind of S and M thing, I think, on a, yeah. in our, <laughs> deep in our national psyche. Um, <laughs> but cricket's laws change pretty slowly. Now, I I have to say, but as, during my extensive research of about thirty five minutes this morning, in fact, I believe that the rules were changed, and one of you cricket experts will confirm or deny this. That in fact, this maneuver, this mode of dismissal, the man, the man catting or man cutting, was officially made part of Law 38 as a legal maneuver as of 2022. Is that I see you nodding, Nate? Is that correct or no? It was clarified a little bit more as an as a legal uh, maneuver. Yes, I'm just pointing out to Andy that in fact, you know, there has been a rule change, and to Andy, I presume your frustration. And perhaps eternal quest for vengeance. <laughs> <laughs> the rule has been adjusted to allow for and incorporate this mode of dismissal. Yeah, well, it. I mean, it is. You know, it's 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 legitimate. I mean, the law, like it doesn't have that that element that I think would really help with these things of just saying the non-striker cannot leave until the ball has been released by the bowler. I think that would just clarify things. And and basically would remove the Mankad from the game, and we could remember Venu Mankad as one of India's finest cricketers in the the early years of uh, Indian international cricket, rather than his legacy being this irritating, f uh, irritating and seldom used form of uh, form of dismissal. So there Please was a, speak a for tweak, a, yeah. but I'm not sure it was necessarily a tweak that will end these uh, disputes and debates in a world that needs peace, Judge. You take Atif's side, Andy. You're also his friend and colleague. You're obviously uh, corrupt and biased. <laughs> <laughs> Coming from an American, is that a compliment or an insult? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome aboard, is what I'm saying. <laughs> but you are. But at the same time, you are undeniably charming, uh, oh, illuminating, and wonderful. So right. it all balances out. As long as you're entertaining, even a criminal can be president. No comment. Right. <laughs> But uh, let me ask you this final question as an authority, a world authority on cricket. Universal authority, I'd say. Indeed. Yep. <laughs> Given that I, I am but a, a lowly New Englander, uh, the only bowling I know from is Candlepin. Right. Why, I, I'm, not, I'm not someone born and bred in the birthplace of cricket, which is to say somewhere between... Durham and Raleigh, North Carolina. <laughs> Nonetheless, do I not have at this point the authority, if not the mandate, to change the rules of and laws of world cricket forever uh, on this podcast to finally make an adjustment one way or the other to eliminate or enshrine this mode of dismissal that we call rightly or wrongly man -catting? Well, I think you have that authority. Yeah, I mean, I'm, you. you'd have to run that past the the uh, the, the Marylebone Cricket Club, the MCC, based at Lords in London, who, who who are the custodians of the laws of the game. But I think if you ask nicely, you'd be very probably... surprised to learn that I'm texting with them right now, and they say it's fine. 
I'm I'm sure they'll I'm sure they'll they'll go with that. And also, you know, let's not forget international cricket began in the in the United States, the game between uh, the USA and Canada in 18, 1844. So when uh, if you find yourself watching baseball thinking, well, this is too short, why is why is it only going on for a few hours? Why is there not enough going on in it? Cricket is very much saying to America, here's what you could have had. Andy Saltzman, I'm going to reverse Hodgman you by giving the plug at the end of the segment. <laughs> People can go listen to your podcast, The Bugle. And and what else do you have going on? Where where else can people find you? Where else should people find you? Uh, well, if you're in uh, the UK in March, we're doing various live Bugle shows dotted around the place. Details at thebuglepodcast.com. I'm also hosting the News Quiz on BBC Radio 4, which you can find through the BBC Sounds app. And then I'll be doing a stand-up tour late in the year. Um, details, TBC. And that would be the dot .com. Uh, we're going to hear more about, I see Nate got very excited to talk about the first American cricket game. Unfortunately, we're going to have to take a break and say goodbye to you, Andy, uh, but we'll be back in a moment. Jesse, you want to take us out? We'll have more of the Judge John Hodgman podcast, including more with Atif and Nate when we come back in just a moment. Welcome back to the Judge John Hodgman podcast and our conflict between Atif and Nate. So how, Nate, how did you come to cricket? We've heard a lot about cricket from two, two people in England. You are not there. You are in North Carolina. What is going on? Why are you here? Why should you and I get to change the rules of this game? Well, I was introduced to the sport by some Indian friends who showed me in 2015 uh, it, uh, some plays that had happened, actually a sequence of events that happened in the World Cup at the time. It was a very famous mm. sequence featuring uh, Pakistan versus Australia with some very aggressive bowling. And at the end of, cricket can get so aggressive, at the end of, this this bowler was bouncing the ball up at the batter, um, yeah, right at his head. And at the end of every time he would, have, at the end of his run-up, because the bowler to get up the pace runs up to the, to the crease. Yeah. He would be. He would finish fifteen or so feet away from the batter, clapping in his face like this. And I thought that intensity right there between the batter and the bowler. I've never seen Nolan Ryan finish his pitch and then you know just a few inches away from Tony Gwynn's face, clapping in his face. Um, but that would be great. Would that be legal in baseball, Jesse Thorne, for the pitcher to get up and clap in the batter's face? John, it wouldn't be in the spirit of the game. <laughs> okay, fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> And so you really first encountered cricket in 2015. So really a life, a lifetime of generational cricket knowledge, lore, and love in you. I mean, we're talking almost a, almost a decade at this point. Almost a decade. I've always loved sports. I grew up with baseball. I played baseball in college, and I was just very happy to find something new that was that was uh, really grabbing my attention. And I just dove right in, and I learned how to play and. What do you put? What position do you play? Are are you an all rounder or a one rounder? I'm. I joke that I'm a fielding all rounder, which means that um I field a lot and bowl and bat seldomly because I'm not particularly great at at either of those. But I'm a good fielder. I'm better at batting than bowling. But um I would consider myself a uh, a batter who bats number seven. What is the scene like in North Carolina? What's the cricket scene like? We actually have one of the greatest communities in the country. Um, if you ask me, I think it's the best community in the country. We have uh, something in the USA called Major League Cricket, which just launched this year. Major League Cricket. What a nerve. What a nerve. It's huge. Well, I know, but it's not major in the context of the world. It, that depends. That In cricket, the, the leagues, the professional leagues are so short that you can get the very best players in the world to play in multiple leagues, and that's what they've done here. They actually have many of the best players in the whole... It's actually a really big deal right now, Major League Cricket. In the cricketing uh, world, it's, I love it's it. pretty huge. Yeah. So, Atif, is that true? Is, is, is Major League Cricket a big deal in the cricketing world? Most definitely. I mean, and just as Nate says, I mean, the cricket calendar is a little bit different. So you have your sort of international games of cricket. But in baseball, for example, you'll have one player who plays for a team year round, right? But in cricket, in T20 cricket, these leagues that exist, they allow you to play for like four or five different teams over the course of a year. So as Nate mm. says, some of the very best players in the world and the most popular players in the world came over to play in America and spoke really highly of their time in America, playing in Texas, playing in North Carolina. Like it was really well received, really well produced, really well attended. It was it was great fun. The only sort of downside is the the way it clashes with 
some other leagues in the world because there's a finite amount of days in a year and there's just not enough days in the year to watch cricket. And Judge Hodgman, just to clarify, D20 cricket is cricket where the outcomes are determined by the role of a 20 sided <laughs> Yeah, that's what I imagined. <laughs> it would have to be. It would have to be. Yeah, get your dice bag, cricketers. Atif, if you were going to take an airplane uh, across the Atlantic Ocean to see some hot feces cricket played anywhere in the United States, where's the top cricket being played right now? It probably in, in North Carolina, I think, just because they've got Isn't a beautiful, that? in Morrisville, they've got that beautiful stadium. And, you know, they, it was so picturesque to watch during the major league. But oh, it's not just specific to that. I think Texas is quite a hotbed for it as well. I think it's where the headquarters of the major league cricket are uh, happening as well. This summer, the hot ticket is going to be New York, right? Uh, where oh. Eisenhower Park in New York, which is going to host a World Cup match between India and Pakistan. So that's kind of, that's probably going to be the most watched cricket match of all time. And it's happening on your shores. You should go. I'm going to now. Nate, what proportion of this American cricket is played by people who live abroad? What proportion is played by uh, first generation immigrants who grew up playing the game elsewhere? And, and what proportion is played by uh, people who were born in the United States like you and perhaps even grew up playing baseball or, or or something like that? We have a large South Asian diaspora in the USA right now. Um, and they are the ones, them and the Caribbean diaspora are the ones who mostly play cricket in the USA. But mostly, almost almost exclusively, it's, uh, it's you know, children of, of uh, immigrants. I'd love to better understand the cultural context of this. So, in the baseball analogy that's playing out in in my head, uh, the spirit of the game argument is a very lively one in baseball right now, largely because of a sort of combination of, of intercultural and intergenerational conflicts where uh, a lot of younger players in particular, but especially younger players from the Latin American countries where baseball is very popular, like Venezuela and the the Caribbean countries where where baseball is very popular, like say Cuba uh, or or the Dominican Republic, um, often play a let's say a more expressive form of the game that for many years in baseball was looked down upon. Uh, as, there's a lot of I think there's a lot of mime involved. <laughs> there's there's a lot of like they're always running into walls. <laughs> there's a lot of what I would what I would broadly characterize as enjoying yourself. <laughs> oh, I see. Having fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but enjoying yourself in a way that that could otherwise be interpreted as showing up your opponent is certainly how certain old, older people uh, m might interpret it. Um, so what's the what's the cultural you you both of you have very sort of mixed cultural contexts for this with Nate, you being a, a native born American white dude um, and uh, Ashif, you being a native born Briton of Pakistani ancestry. So what is the like, what is the colonial and cultural context in which this is going down? Well, unlike baseball, where, like you said, it's it's very much related to kind of where the players come from. And as we've seen in baseball, there is an argument to kind of tone it down a little just because we have those fall leagues in South America that end often in large brawls that we see uh, in viral posts. Uh, in, in Unlike that, in cricket, the, it's, it's not so much cultural difference, it's difference in format, I believe. So you, you have the traditional cricket format, which is, we've talked much about the, the long, the multi-day games. Now, there hasn't been a Moncad in, a Moncad in uh, the multi-day games since 1979. So with the game getting shorter to, to appeal to more people, they, they have a shorter game called T20. And with that game, it, instead of the strategy is a little bit different. The, the onus is on the batting side to score faster. And because of that, the, anybody who's, who's seen leaving the crease early at the non-strikers end is a threat to adding to that score faster because um, you have a limited number of balls to score your runs. Let the record show, if you're not watching on YouTube, Nate is running back and forth between wickets <laughs> while he's giving this model. It's very impressive. He's just racking up runs, racking up runs. Atif, how do you feel about this American coming in saying this is the way cricket should be? I, I kind of agree with a lot of what Nate is saying. Um, Unbelievable. I, I, I think <laughs> it's all, it all makes sense. Most Almost all of it makes sense. My only contention, really, is that 
this incident that has this massive that can potentially have this massive impact on a game of cricket it's disproportionate to the level of skill and to the to the you know the punishment doesn't fit the crime for me so right now if you're caught, if you're out man catted you could be out now you could be the star player of your team it could be a really crucial moment in the game and all of a sudden the game's lopsided and the whole momentum has gone a completely different direction you might get a completely different result and this end result is not satisfactory for either team really yeah but if you get if you get run out this way using this maneuver it's because you're outside of your crease i don't know what i'm saying but it is still <laughs> a choice that that non-striking batter is making. It is a risk they are taking, correct? Absolutely. You're, you're, you're bang on there, as is Nate. When he hang, said on, hang on, Atif, hang on, Atif, hang on, hang on. Jesse, did you hear that? I'm bang on. Yeah, I agree. I'm so excited. I've never been bang on before in my life. I agree that batters shouldn't do it, but I, I feel like the punishment of people being bowled out, uh, being given out and having to you know, be removed from the field of play for that, is is far too harsh. I like to go with what Andy suggested. Sorry, which was um, you tweak the rules that if the batter is pulling up, you just it just does it doesn't count, or there's like a, a different penalty, like a run penalty. Nate is shaking his head vigorously now at the suggestion of a tweak. Why, Nate? He's also wagging his finger, Judge Hodgman. That's, tr that's true. That's a that's a allowed a permissible wag. Well, here's the here's the thing. Uh, I agree that nobody really wants to see a game decided based on somebody's leaving the crease early and getting out. However, do you want to see a game decided by penalty runs? Do you really want to see a game decided by penalty runs? Because that could happen. If, if, if your solution is you can't leave the crease, and if you do, we're going to award penalty runs. Penalty runs, first of all, does not exist anywhere outside of England, I don't believe. I can't believe it. I can't imagine an American sport having penalty runs, penalty points right. awarded. You're saying, I don't even know what penalty runs are, but you're just saying the, the alternative is chaos. The alternative is taking runs away from the batting team. The alternative is worse than the thing that it would be. That's curing. what I, and not just that. Jesse mentioned that um, baseball very seldom changes rules. Before they changed their rules a couple of years ago, they tested these rules for for years in the Atlantic League, which is an independent minor league. And, and these were rules that affected every single ball. With, with, with this, how are you going to test this when it's only happened 14 times? And that is why Nate is so passionate that he's wagging his finger in the camera, a move that we American sports fans know as matumboing. Atif, what is Nate missing here? I think possibly, right? And I don't mean to sound patronizing or in any way minimizing experiences. I really in... wish you would, actually, but that's <laughs> fine. I don't mean to like downplay his experience in cricket because he's, you know, got a wonderful mind for cricket. I love talking to him about cricket, uh, all things cricket in all You're detail. You're a native-born Englander. It is your birthright to patronize. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, so I think when you grow up with something, right? Like, and I've, you know, this a couple of things in my life that I love more than cricket, uh, you know, and I probably couldn't say them out loud in front of a group full of people. But I, you know, I, when I grew up with it, I grew up with, uh, you know, just that reverence for the game, you know, you, that respect for the game. Like I remember every time I, even now I've been working in the field for a long time in a, a professional capacity. Every time I set foot on the ground of play, you know, if it's a special feeling to me, I've done it hundreds of times. Do you think there's a threat that if, that, that if, Ron's run off non-striking batter, whatever it is, man cutting, however you want to call it, that if it starts getting practice in North Carolina, the hotbed of cricket, that it's become more and more popular and more and more used and it's going to degrade the game, yes or no? Well, it's already becoming more more popular and it's happening in, in North Carolina. Because people are movement. being little stinkers, right? They're being little <laughs> stinkers. I think, you know, it's, look, it's within the laws of the game, but it should never be the focus. In a game where a bowler takes five wickets and a batsman scores a hundred runs or someone takes the most spectacular catch, that should be the news story. Nate, what is the spirit of the game for you? And why does man catting fit into it? The spirit of the game isn't really for me to decide, but what I will say is this is a game for athletes. This is a game for nerds. Cricket. It's always being pitched this way. It's always being pitched. This is a good game. Bold. For... It's being bold this way. Please. It's being bold. It's being bold this way. Yeah. It's it's being delivered to us this way. And and in my opinion, this isn't like we're we're arguing about a a, a runner a, a batter who just got out and walked across the pitcher's mound and made the batter ma made the pitcher mad. This is a mode of dismissal. Dismissal. This is one of the ways you can get out in cricket. This is uh, written in the rules and. I think for from a nerd point of view, 
uh, from a, like a nerd D and D point of view and from a athlete point of view, it, it, when is it ever discouraged to, uh, to exploit a loophole in the rules that happens all the time in cricket? I mean, Atif, Nate mentioned earlier that one of the things that attracted him to the game was it's sheer aggression the running at the batter and the clapping in his face and everything else. But that's not deception, right? That's not being a little stinker. Is cricket less stinky than baseball? I would say so. I mean, I've had the pleasure of watching a, a game of baseball with with Nate, actually. We went to Yankee Stadium and, you know, I had a great time. Very much enjoyed watching the baseball. But all it did for me was, other than the fact that it was a very enjoyable game, it's a world apart from cricket. It's a completely different thing. Like, it's helpful sometimes when you're making a general comparison to say things like, oh, you know, stopping short or whatever it is, right? But at the same time, it's a different game with different rules, different dynamics, different vibe, right? If I can use that word. Nate is trying to baseballify cricket. Yes or no, Atif? Totally. Totally. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You know, Nate, if you were, if I were to rule in your favor, you want me to rule and, and well, essentially reassert the existing rule that running off the non-striking batter is fine. And actually people should be doing it more often. Yes. That people, that the best way to stop it from happening is simply be responsible. At your own, at the boat, a non-striker end. Yes. Yeah. You see it as a disincentive structure for a non-striking batter yes. to leave the crease in a yes. fast-paced game. Atif, two quick questions before I get to your final ruling. One, what do you think about this fast-paced game, this T20 that, uh, uh, that uh, Nate was talking about? Is this good for cricket or no? Brilliant uh, for cricket. It's opened up cricket to a whole new world. I mean, just a couple of days ago, I was watching Japan versus the Cook Islands play a game of cricket. I didn't even know the Cook Islands was a country. It's cheaper to put on. It's more exciting for advertisers. It's more inclusive. It's it's brilliant. It allows people to enjoy the sport who can't take five days off from <laughs> responding to court summonses. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> and even though that shorter form game might actually encourage more man catting yeah this is the thing man because it's become the financial and the the sort of a, the attention center of cricket now t20 cricket because that's where all the money is that's where all the big players are drawn less wear and tear on your body the more achievement more exposure whatever it is you want to say right it has now become the big boy format and the big girl format in cricket so you need to you know you need to hold that to the highest possible standard of play and and for me you know man catting you know it it it's becoming more frequent. I know it's only happened 14 times in history, but it's becoming more frequent. Should we call it man-catting or should we get rid of that name? Well, see, if you go by the the, the gentleman's family, right? So I know his yes. grandson is quite, uh, you know, like he takes great pride in that it. phrase, right? He's into it. Yeah. But there's other members of his family who are not into it, who think that we don't like this. Call it run, run out at the non-striker's end and talk about the guy's actual career as an all-round cricketer. So if I were to rule in your favor then, Atif, what would I be ruling? No men catting allowed? No runoff non-striker's end allowed ever? No, not necessarily. Uh, you, you could have uh, man catting, but it wouldn't be a mainstream thing. It would be an outlier that wouldn't pick up. How, how would I enforce that? Uh, you bring, don't do it. Like tell people, please don't. You tweak the rules, <laughs> you know, as we, as we're frequently doing in cricket. You tweak the rules, right, to mm -hmm. make it that you have to either make a, a warning mandatory, or the consequence is not the batter getting out. It's something else. The rule you would like me to instill is that mandatory one warning. Yes. And then if the non-striking batter or the batter on the non-striking end leaves the crease again, fair game to run them off. Fair game to run them off. I'll be back in a moment with my verdict. Please rise as Judge John Hodgman exits the courtroom. Nate, how are you feeling about your chances? I think I've uh, presented my case pretty well. Um, yeah, I think I have a pretty good chance here. Uh, just I think there's a lot unknown if you change the rule. And if you do the rule with the um, the warning first, you can give that warning at any time. The fans might not even know it's happened. And then you'll have the same uh, you still have the same outcome with the same dissatisfaction. Atif, how do you feel about York chances? Pretty good. Feel pretty good. Uh, I think, you know, despite the fact that I've been a little bit uneven about the way I've presented my argument, and no doubt about it, Nate has presented his much cleaner and more tidier than me. I think he has an uphill task here because um, if had I been arguing for you against the rule fundamentally, I would understand, um, you know, but to talk about 
you know the significance of it and it, the, the the impact it has on it uh i th- i feel pretty good about having explained the emotive side of the romance of cricket the appeal of cricket and where i want to see cricket go in the future i don't want to go going backwards to mr mancad's days i want it to go forwards into a eisenhower park era well we'll see what judge hodgman has to say about all this when we come back Judge Hodgman, we're taking a quick break, and the Max Fun Drive is right around the corner. The Max Fun Drive is right around the corner, which is a temporal metaphor for next week, for two weeks. This is the time when we will ask you to join Maximum Fun by going to MaximumFun.org slash join. This is the one time a year we do it, and it is also our most special time of year in that we fill it with podcast delights. We fill Max Fun Drive with fun. It's right there in the middle. So not only are we going to have special episodes for you in these two weeks, not only are we going to have bonus content episodes that are available only to members, not only are we going to have, you know, all kinds of uh, all kinds of reminders to you about all the, the cool stuff you can get if you become a member or if you upgrade your existing membership, not only are we going to remind you of the special mission of Maximum Fun being an employee-owned cooperative of artist-owned podcasts. This is a, a total unicorn in the podcast world that thrives only because of your support. But also, we're going to get up to some hijinks. Yeah, antics. We've got antics planned. We got live streams planned. We got get your pets planned. We got uh, 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 maybe impromptu stuff planned. And it's all going to be happening over on our brand spanking new YouTube page over at YouTube, and it's a Judge John Hodgman pod. You're already over there, I hope, watching our whole episodes and our special uh, internet-only Swift Justice uh, shorts. But also, during the Max Fun Drive, you never know when I might just pop up there and do a little uh, do a little live streaming of, uh, of uh, SimCity uh, 2013 edition. I haven't done that for a while. I'm definitely going to be getting over there and, and talking to your cats and dogs and other pets, and I hope maybe Jesse Thorne will bring uh, not not only his his wonderful exist, extant dog, but the brand new dog member of his family, Junior, right? Yeah, Junior's going to make an appearance. There's no doubt about it. You haven't met Junior yet, listeners, and you're going to meet Junior. Junior's going to, we're going to have a Junior debut, Jesse. How about that? We're going to have a, a, a debutante ball for Junior during the Max Fun Drive live stream over on the YouTube page. I already got him his gown. Yeah, it's going to be so much fun over there. And it's just, and, you, and you never know when we might pop in there and do something fun and special. So now more than ever, get over to the to the YouTube dot com website. Go to Judge John Hodgman Pod uh, and subscribe and like and do all the things you're going to do and hit those notifications because then you'll know that something's happening. And then we can talk to you a little bit more about the Max Fun Drive starting next week and and why it's so important. Listen, we've got a lot of new listeners. I'm very excited to to hear and see because we've been getting all these wonderful reviews from new listeners. And I'm so glad you're here. Uh, if you're listening for the first time this year and you haven't experienced a Max Fun Drive, it really is Max Fun. And it really is precisely the way that this show gets supported and thrives year over year. So I look forward to hanging out with you on YouTube, on the podcast and everywhere else. The way you'll be able to do it is just by going to MaximumFun.org slash join. We hope that you will. And uh, let's get back to the case. Please rise as Judge John Hodgman re-enters the courtroom and presents his verdict. It's complicated that this great player is now associated with this legal maneuver that is nonetheless, through because of unwritten rules of uh, proper etiquette, is really looked down upon by a lot of people, including you, Atif, as being unsporting and not in the spirit of the game. First, let's just honor the 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 player and and separate it from the maneuver. I I'm happy for his family to to be glad of that association, but as we're talking going forward, we're just going to call it Ron's. And there is something complicated, you know. Obviously, what's fascinating about cricket is that it is, you know, as you pointed out, Nate, it is athletic in ways that are surprising for a for a sport that is still played while wearing sweaters. <laughs> And it is also highly nerdy. I didn't even know that they used a 20-sided die in it. Thank you, Jesse, for that. It's also so 
sort of associated for obvious reasons with British and frankly, colonialism. And yet it is truly a global sport that is adopted and loved around the world. And, you know, part of the complication of calling this term after the name of Vinu Mankat is that, you know, he was a non-white player in Australia who, you know, did this maneuver that the Australians thought wasn't cool. So there has been a long association based on my 35 minutes of research about the complication of like, like maligning this particular, you know, maneuver with the name of this very famous Indian player. Obviously, you ran into this too, uh, Atif, when you made your critique of the Pakistani team. And, you know, Pakistani fans of the game were mad at you for for critiquing a team that, that shares your ancestry. You know, so it's, it's, there's a lot going on, not least of which is the fact that into this multicultural post-colonial stew, a young man from Washington, D.C., has come to North Carolina to reinvent cricket for Long Island or whatever it is your mission to do there, Nate. And part of you, you're looking at this kind of from a money ball point of view, right? Like this is, this is a game that you come to as an enthusiast, but without the same cultural gravity and connection that someone like Atif has or, or, or Andy. And you look at it like, well, it's in the rules. Why not do it? In fact, I've got a fun idea. I think it'll even be better in this new fast-paced version of the game if you do have it, because it will actually create a disincentive that will increase game quality, and you won't have those horrible penalty runs. See, I listened. But on the other hand, there is this element of, like, this new guy coming in to reinvent a game and the spirit of a game that, that you don't understand, because in the United States, we're all little stinkers. In sports, it's part of the game. Stinking it up. I really, really, really want to call up whatever the governing body is for cricket and say, look, Atif is right. This is a controversial move. It's always been unwritten, an unwritten rule to give a warning to the non-striker batter or the batter in the non-striking position, or whatever it's called. In fact, Vinu Mankad did give a warning the first time and then, you know, didn't. And that was what was so controversial. But Nate's right. It's unenforceable. Even if, what's the governing body that we're talking about? MCC. Even if they're, even they're like, hey, we got a call from a podcaster in America. <laughs> uh, he's right. We should change this. Someone over there probably knows a lot about cricket would be like, it's unenforceable. It's unenforceable. How would you know, how would you know that, the, that the warning had been given? When would the warning be given? I think that it's, it's hard because it does feel like the game is changing, Atif. Cricket is being played in America at a highly competitive level, and the game is getting shorter. It's changing. This is what happens with games. And it's probable, I'm, I have to say, that as more little stinkers like Nate get into this game, they're going to look at this legal maneuver and be like, why wouldn't I use it? That's cricket. And you would say it's not the spirit of cricket. It's like, uh, you know... Nate doesn't care. I mean, Nate, you care. Of course you do. And more and more players, if they if they are coming to this shorter form game and they see an advantage in it, it's that's how it's going to be played. And I get it. I don't think that that's so hot. But other than eliminating that possibility altogether, I don't see I don't see how your one warning rule is going to change it. Sometimes change is unavoidable. The method by which cricket was spread to the world, right, is not a wonderful history. And because time moves forward, people can enjoy this game that was brought to them by imperial colonialism and a very, very harsh history. You know, like that's what moving forward is to a degree. Evolution, claiming of the game by the people who play it and playing it differently. And making it their own. Who am I, a podcaster, to run off that non-striking batter? It's in the rules. Law 38. What I think is worth preserving is this conversation, dare I say, fight that you and Nate are going to get into it year after year. Because cricket is a nerdy sport. 
just like baseball, for nerds to fight over. <laughs> Why would I eliminate an opportunity for you two to get on the wireless or the phone or whatever, however you communicate, to telegraph across the Atlantic and get all snippy about it with each other? Have a little chat, if, uh, if you will. I don't love sports. I love technicalities. I love these gray areas where all of these issues of, of sports personship, the spirit of the game, the rules of the game. Can you knock this thing off? What is the history of this? Uh, you know, why is it called Mancat? All of these things. And what does it mean that it's called man, you know, named after this player and that sort of thing. These, this messiness, I think, is part of what makes sports exciting, even for me. And yes, I do think that there is a threat, unfortunately, Atif, that especially now the listeners of Judge John Hodgman are going to become cricket players and cricket fanatics. And I guarantee you, because of this conversation, they're all going to be chanting, man, cad, man, cad, man, cad. They're going to want to see it. I'm part of the problem. But then look at me. Of course I am. Unfortunately, I cannot intervene. I don't think the solution of the one warning will, will suffice. I don't think banning it is within my remit. And I do think that it's fun how messy it is and how complicated it is and how harsh it is. This is the most I've been interested in a sport in years. And if it wouldn't happen if you guys didn't have this dispute. I will say there should be more dogs in cricket, but otherwise I rule in Nate's favor. Got to keep it status quo. This is the sound of a gavel. Judge John Hodgman rules that is all. Please rise as Judge John Hodgman exits the courtroom. Atif, how are you feeling? I, uh, you know, I, I mean, I, I, I think it's, uh, I respectfully disagree, but I accept, you know, it's, um, it's something that is quite contentious. Nate, how are you feeling? I feel great. Of course, because the rule, the ruling was in my favor, but even if it hadn't been the monologue that I just heard, I would have been happy with either decision just based on how beautifully that was put. Nate Atif, thanks for joining us on the Judge John Hodgman podcast. Thank you for having us. Pleasure. Another Judge John Hodgman case is in the books. We'll have swift justice in just a second. First, our thanks to Redditor Shed One for naming this week's episode, It's Just Is Not Cricket. Yeah, because you say it's just not cricket. That means it's just not fair. Yeah. It's just not done. Just is not. I liked that one. I picked it. Join yeah. the conversation at the Maximum Fun subreddit. That's MaximumFun.reddit.com. Dot com. We'll be asking for title suggestions at MaximumFun.reddit.com. So join us there and suggest them or just look at other people's suggestions because they're fun. Evidence and photos from the show are both on the episode page uh, at MaximumFun.org and on Instagram at Judge John Hodgman. Uh, so follow us there. And if you want to see our beautiful faces, a reminder, go subscribe to the Judge John Hodgman podcast on YouTube. Full episodes are being posted there, as well as special shorts that you won't hear or see uh, anywhere, anywhere else uh, besides on Instagram. I think we're posting those on Instagram, too. Go to YouTube slash Judge John Hodgman pod and smash that like subscribe and the notifications button. That's what they tell you to do. Hey, before we get out of here, I just want to apologize to a listener, a new listener named Amy. Amy wrote a five-star review of Judge John Hodgman on Apple Podcasts saying, quote, I didn't really know what to expect from this, but what I got was dry humor, wordplay, and a big slice of actual justice, uh, which is a very nice thing to say. Thank you, Amy, for that. But Amy did go on to write, quote, I realized I cannot use this to help me get to sleep because I end up listening to the whole show. So I'm sorry. I do apologize for keeping you awake, Amy. And to some degree, I apologize for wordplay. Uh, but thank you for, so much for listening. And if uh, Jesse and I have been keeping you awake and you haven't already, please consider going over to Apple Podcasts and leaving a review there or, or letting anyone know wherever you can about listening to the show. It really helps people discover the show. And you may know that uh, Apple Podcasts in particular uh, did an update. So if you were subscribed to the show before, you you might not be following it now. Um, so maybe go over to Apple Podcasts if that's what you use and, and re-follow us or do whatever it takes to let people know when you're over there. Leave a review. It really, really, really helps. And hey, if you need a podcast to fall asleep to, there is a Maximum Fun podcast that's fall asleep to it themed. John Moe's Sleeping with Celebrities 
where yeah. celebrities go on and talk about the most boring thing that they really know a lot about until you fall asleep. Yeah, it's terrific. It's really great. Judge John Hodgman was created by Jesse Thorne and John Hodgman. This episode engineered by Amir Yacoub at Bison Studios in London, England. The podcast edited by A.J. McKeon, our video editor, Daniel Spear, our producer, the ever-capable Jennifer Marmer. Now, Swift Justice, where we answer your small disputes with quick judgment. Matthew from Columbus, Ohio writes, I seek an injunction on my cousin Casey. He needs to stop buying abandoned churches and banks until he explains what his plan is. <laughs> this was one of the most delightful letters I've ever gotten in my life. That's it. That was the entire sentence of the entire email. And uh, I will I will absolutely uh, order this injunction on Casey until he can explain what his plan is buying all these abandoned churches and banks. Uh, but I also mandate that Casey and Matthew appear on the podcast as soon as possible so that we can get to the bottom of this injunction granted pending a full hearing. You know, John, it's springtime. Yeah. The season of new beginnings. And I imagine that there are some new beginning related squabbles out there in our audience. Some spring related squabs is what you mean. Spring cleaning uh, disputes related to flowers blooming. Jennifer Marmer asks, does your weird partner insist that the Easter beagle is real? I, uh, that's, a, that's a peanuts. That's a peanuts themed dispute. Absolutely. Uh, any, and, and, or how about this? Since we were talking about sport, March Madness is coming up. That's a sports thing, right, Jesse? It is. Well, Judge, Judge Hodgman, I'm headed to spring training this week. There we go. I'm going to see what conflicts I have with our former Max Fund colleague, Nick White, uh, with whom I'm going to spring training. I think there could be something good. I don't know if you saw, but Judge John Hodgman legend Joey Votto uh, is currently a baseball free agent, uh, hasn't signed with a team, and he recorded a very funny social media video uh, where he was driving through a car wash looking mad. And he said, this is not spring training. <laughs> <laughs> Joey Votto, go on Judge John Hodgman. Spring is sprung. Spring your spring disputes to us at MaximumFun.org slash J-J-H-O. And Jesse, it says here, we're eager to hear about all your disputes. Is that correct? Big or small, we judge them all. MaximumFun.org slash J-J-H-O. We are always grateful to hear your disputes. So please uh, look at the per look at the people around you and think about what problems you have with them. Then go to yeah. MaximumFun.org slash J-J-H-O. And don't forget, folks, it is the Max Fund Drive right this very moment. Go to MaximumFund.org slash join. All of these things that you've just heard about are supported directly by you, the audience. We're so grateful for your support, and we hope you will participate if you do not already by going to MaximumFun.org slash join. We'll talk to you next time on the Judge John Hodgman podcast. I gotta say, I watched, I watched a, a compilation of uh, bowlers running off non-striking batters. Those sneaky little <laughs> 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 It was fun. It was fun to watch. You know what? Leave out the bad word, but leave that in the edit. Maximum Fun, a worker-owned network of artist-owned shows supported directly by you.